with the Nick Diaz stuff. Can you just explain for for everybody sort of where that came from, where that, where why you decided to to really make that stand and support that way? Yeah, no, the reason why is I've been. I was part of USAD, I was part of the whole Olympic movement, uh, training for for four years for the Olympics. I started getting tested when I was in high school. And I just felt like, the, and, it, uh, and the Nevada Athletic Commission was kind of targeting Nick Diaz. And uh, I just felt like that was uncalled for. I, and I competed, I won a gold medal. And I'd never been tested three times in one day. Uh, in a span of 12 hours. And I just felt like he was targeted, and I think me as a, as a fellow fighter, I can't, I can't let that go down. At least for me, man, I couldn't live with myself. Being suspended for five years. I mean, we've seen some of the stuff that other fighters have done and to stop the worse. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not judging anybody by any way. I make mistakes too. Like I made a mistake right before I <laughs> jumped, on the, jumped on the mic. But, uh, I'm, you know, I'm standing firm and I mean it when I say I'm not going to fight about it. Even, that, even if that means uh, letting go of the title. Uh, like I said before, my self worth is worth more than my net worth. And the, the reason why I'm called the messenger is because I try to do good. I try to do good with the platform that God has given me. I became a gold medalist, and uh, I, I, I love speaking at schools. I wrote an autobiography, and I've seen the difference that I can make through sharing my story. Son of immigrants, raised in a single parent home, son of a, son, uh, son of a father who's an alcoholic. So I, it gets really into depth with me. So, so it's something very broad. And I think me helping out Nick Diaz kind of allows me to continue to sh kind of share my story with people. The reason why I do things. Have you had a conversation with the UFC at all? Obviously, that's something you were in that position. A win over Juicy A. A lot of people think you would probably be next. You talk to them at all about that stance. DJ has said he'd like to be part of February card in Las Vegas. Um, you know, I have not spoken to the UFC, but like I said, man, I'm and and the UFC have done. They've just done such a great job. I mean, they treated me so well. But I'm taking my stance on this, man. Like I said before, man, I'm, I'm a slave to no man. I know what it feels like to be the best in the world. I have a gold medal. Do I need to do I, you know, they really want that gold, the gold belt right now and kind of lose my dignity, my self-worth. I'm, I'm sorry to break this to you, but my gold, my gold medal is actually gold-plated. That belt is not actually gold, you know. It, it's gold-plated as well. And like I said before, it's, it, it, it goes back to my character, to my integrity. So will it take the suspension being overturned? I mean, what are you looking for to be willing to consider fighting? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, if it's overturned, good. Uh, absolutely, I'd fight in Vegas. I, actually, I like going to Vegas. But, <laughs> you know, you're Las Vegas. But it, it's to the point where somebody has to take a stance. I'll be willing to take the sacrifice. Go ahead, man. If I'm gone, you guys don't know why I did this. <laughs> Call me a martyr of the sport of MMA. It's okay. Is a reduction okay? Like, if they come back and say, you know, we, we've looked at it five years is too much, and it gets reduced to, I think their new standard is three for a third failure. Is there, is there, or is it just a complete voiding of it that'll get you to, to relent on this? Yeah, I think at that point I would really have to talk to uh, my team, my agent, who is my mentor, uh, Bill McFarland. Um, I would have to talk to them about it because I, I, obviously I do want to fight, I do want to compete. But at the same time, man, it's, it's uh, I, I, I gotta allow this man to get a fair trial, man. You know, it's unjust what they did. And that's all. It's not about me no more, man. I've reached success. I know what it feels like. I was the best in the world. It's not like when you, you know, you fight someone and you can continue to keep exchanging the belt. For four years, I trained for something my whole life, and I became the best in the world. I remember success is, is cool. But I think for me now, as a competitor, I'm gonna win. But to me now, it's based more on significance. So success, significance. I pick, I, I pick significance because I know what it feels like to be the best. Have you talked to Nick at all? Has he reached out at all? He has reached out, man. He has reached out uh, through social media. I haven't spoken to him over the phone. But this, is, this isn't this is only for Nick, man. This is for everybody. I'm fighting for all you guys, man. Like, this is... Who knows, man? I may be next. I can't maybe paint my... Maybe I painted my fingernails. Uh, paint may, uh, may get me suspended, too. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm fighting for everybody. I'm fighting for all these fighters in the UFC. I'm if the suspension is reduced, I mean, there's still sort of something inherently that must be broken with the uh, you know, athletic commission if they are targeting fighters like that. I mean, do you think that there needs to be a conversation about the very governing body that, that dictates these rules? Yeah, absolutely. Maybe uh, maybe uh, the fighters probably need to start a board. And I can't, I'm afraid to even say the U word. Because, Andy, that's a whole other article that's going to be twisted around. But maybe we should start a board. And uh, maybe some of the some of the spearheads like Connor or, or Ronda Rousey. I mean, who am I? A short little Mexican with a big head who happen, happens to have a gold medal that wants to make change. But I think these these, these are the cash cows. You get these guys involved and everything changes. A couple of fighters have, you know, 
joined, uh, taken a similar stance as to you, but and not you know what, that, that many. Are you surprised that not as many have taken your stance on this? Um, I'm not surprised, man. People are scared. People are scared, and some fighters said they have, and then now they're fighting in Vegas. <laughs> yeah. So it's, uh, and again, man, and I, you know, I'm actually a theology major, and if you really think about what the apostles did for, you know, for God, I mean, all these things became martyrs of, for Jesus, it's kind of they thought that would, I wasn't God, and these people were gonna die for this, man. And you know, I'm, I'm kind of taking it to extreme, maybe I'm taking it out of context, but that's somewhat what I feel like here. Like, it's okay, man, if I get cut or whatever happens, that's, you guys know the reason. I get, I, I, and I'll say it again, man, my self-worth is worth more to me than my head. You've been dealing with USADA for years through the Olympics, so is this kind of residual from that? You've seen how they've operated over the years, or is it really just the Diaz situation? No, I think the USADA do. I think it's good, man. It keeps us clean. Uh, but I think that's just to the extreme what they're doing with him. It's like he, he, he's never tested positive for steroids or, or another drug. You know, he tested for marijuana, man. Some of you guys are probably going back and talking a little bit, <laughs> right? What do you, how do you guys feel? I'm not saying that it's right. I mean, it is. It, I mean, it is what it is. But they come on, man, a five-year suspension. You're taking. You're taking the man's career. You're taking. You know, I'm giving you five hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. That's too much, man. That's some, someone has to take a stand, man. I'm kind of tired of it. So I'm, I'm in a situation where hopefully these fighters get a chance to see that that we are the voice, or our voice needs to be heard. Henry, what's your take on DJ? Immediately after you said that you wouldn't be fighting in Las Vegas, Dimitri, you know, Dimitri said to me that he wants his next fight to be in Las Vegas. Is he doing some game, gamesmanship on you, or? No, I don't know. I don't. I can care less. Man, to be honest with you, his time's gonna come. You know, do I, I? His time's gonna come. That's all I gotta say. It doesn't have to be in Vegas. I'll go to Seattle and fight. I really would. Let's go to Phoenix and fight. Let's go to Mexico and fight. But I can't be in Vegas. Can I assume that you don't think marijuana is a PED in any way? Uh, I, I've never smoked man before in my life, but I I have friends that do, and uh, some some of them actually need it. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't be surprised if I need it. Cause I'm like, ah, I want to I want to wrestle all you guys right now. <laughs> so uh, I don't know, man. Come on, you guys don't complicate these questions. For me, I know how this stuff rolls. I actually know front page, Henry Soto said this, and blah blah blah.